All right, I need you to uh, put your Cheetos bag off to the side, recycle your Starbucks cup, because here we go. Today we're going to learn how to write an equation when you're given a graph. And we're just focusing only on linear equations, so we're not going to have parabolas or sine waves or anything funky like that. Just lines, okay? Linear equations. This is uh, so when you see something like this. When we're done with this video, you're going to be able to write the equation that goes with it without having to use a table or any other method, just by your visual skills of what I'm going to teach you. This is Common Core Standard 8F4, uh, which I have partially quoted here because we're going to focus on the language, rate of change, and initial value okay, of a linear function. That means it just makes a line. That's why the word line is in there and uh, graph. So we're focusing on line graphs, the rate of change, and initial value. Okay, The rate of change is right there, the initial value is right there, but we'll talk about that more in just a second. First of all, especially if you're in my class, I want to remind you about uh, these things you already know how to do, and then we're going to relate those things to uh, a graph. You're already uh, experts, I would say, at looking at a table and writing an equation, an XY table. The way we've taught this is that you look for, um, it's like a fill in the blank. Right here you're looking for, to answer this question, how much does Y change for each X? Each is a very important word here, each means one, okay? So in this case, we can see that as x, each x goes by, each one x goes by, we can see that y is changing by 3, and that's why that 3 goes there. Okay, so we've been focusing on answering that question, and this here is answering the question, what is y, comma, when x equals 0? That's how we've been uh, answering that question. So whenever we have a table, we're looking for that ordered pair right there. And then within that, we're looking for that y value, which includes the sign. And that goes there. So that's how we've been uh, breaking down writing an equation when you're given a table. And I hope you remember those types of questions. And also, relating back to what we're learning today, we've got the word change here. We're going to start thinking of that as rate of change. And you could refer back to unit rates and other things we've done in class or in your life. Rate of change. And then over here, what is y when x equals 0? We're going to start calling that initial value. Okay, And the reason why is simply the standard here. That's the language of the standard. So we want to make sure that you're aware of what you're learning and why you're learning it. Okay, so here's quite simply how we can do this just looking at a graph. Let's take our example up here. Now, the important thing is to find a, a point graphed on the y-axis. Okay, the reason why make a little example down here for you. The reason why we want to find a point on the y-axis is first let's see what this ordered pair is. It's there's the x and the y-axis. That ordered pair is 0, 2. Now if you think back to your mad skills working on a table, that's what that looks like on a table, right? And then we would have other points and you're familiar with how we've been writing equations, that 2 goes there in our equation. So that's why we want to find this point on the graph, because that tells us partially how to write the equation. The ordered pair, the y value from the ordered pair, is going to go right there. y equals mx plus b is the format. So you could think of that not only as y, but you could think of that as b as well. 
Okay, and that's called our initial value. That's why that's important. Now all we need to do is find this uh, rate of change, the uh, coefficient of x, number that goes left of x. The way we find that by looking at a graph is think of a fraction and think of the top number as having either a positive or negative value which represents a vertical movement. That means up or down, right? Up if it's positive, down if it's negative. And then the uh, bottom number, the numerator, represents movement to the right only, not to the left or right, to the right. Very important. So, when we're given our example here that we had up above, we had another dot right here. So let's compare our initial value to this second dot, and this is as we're moving to the right. Remember, very important, direction. As we're moving to the right, how do we get from here to here? First, it's going up, thinking of our fraction model down here. First it's going up, and then it's going right. It's going up by one, and it's going right by two. So, it's going up by one and right by two. There's our equation. That's it. Whew, that came on fast. You might be thinking there's other things I need to explain. Uh, nope, that's it. Okay? We could get all complicated and start throwing more vocabulary at you and crazy examples, but all, all we're trying to accomplish with this video is that you can look at a graph even if the dots aren't connected. As long as it's a linear graph or a graph that makes a line, all you need to find is the y-intercept. That's that dot on the y-axis, which we're calling the initial value which we're also calling B. All these things have so many different names. The important thing you know is once you find it, it goes right there. Then, to find the coefficient of x, the slope, which we'll call it later in algebra, the slope of the line, which is a fraction, the numerator is the vertical movement, that's up if it's positive, down if it's negative, and then the bottom number is always as you move to the right, like reading a book. And that is it. There's no more. So why don't we do a few practice problems and see how you do. Okay, I'm going to zoom out so you can capture all of these. But then we'll zoom in and analyze each one. All right, I'm going to make these dots a little bigger so you can see them better. What I need you to do is pause the video so you're looking at these graphs. I think it's a good idea to copy them down onto your own paper so you can use them when the video is over. And all you need to do is write down the graph, write down the equation, and be able to explain where you got your numbers. We want to make sure you understand which one goes where. The order definitely matters, so let's be real careful about this. Go ahead and pause and do that. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Hello! I'm back. Let's do this. Okay? Remember, we're writing equations in y equals mx plus b form. m, remember our standard, is the rate of change and B is the initial value that's using the language of the standard. Later in algebra we'll call this slope intercept but we don't need to use that language quite yet. But if we do you already know. It. There we go. What is the rate of change on this problem? Remember that's up or down on top of movement to the right. So it's going up by one 
and it's going to the right by 1. So our fraction would be 1 over 1. What's a simplified way of writing 1? Well, in this case, we write nothing, right? 1x literally is that. There's 1x, right? So we don't need to write the number 1 because we can see that it's 1x just by looking at it. So the rate of change is 1, and the initial value is right there. The coordinates of that point on the graph are 0, 1, so the 1 goes there. Our equation is y equals x plus 1. I hope you got that. Let me zoom in a little closer. Let's nail the second one. Once we get these four done, it's all over. What's the rate of change? Well, it's going down, isn't it? So it's going down 2, 1, 2. And it's going over 1. So you can see that's our fraction, right? Negative 2 over 1. Roy, it's written in simplified form, is just simply negative 2. Then you put the x. Then there's the ordered pair that's on the y-axis. Remember, the y-axis is the key. That's why it's called the y-intercept. We're calling it the initial value. And in this case, it's negative 2. So the equation for this line is y equals negative 2x minus 2. Whew, this is so easy. Next one. If that went too fast, back it up, back it up. Ah, rate of change here. Okay. As we move to the right, remember, as we go to the right, what's happening? First, it's going up 1. Then, it's going over 3. Up 1, over 3. And not just over, not any old over, but to the right. Remember, it's always to the right, to the right. So the one third goes there. The x goes there. Attention There's the initial the value. We have a the coordinates the of that point minutes. are 0, 2. So the 2 goes there. I have a meeting in four minutes, so you know that this video is going to be over soon. Thanks for watching, by the way. There is the equation for that graph. <laughs> All right, one more. What do you say, one more? Did you get one-third x plus two? Oh yeah, by the way, sometimes you might get a fraction there, and that's okay. Don't worry about it. I know we're all used to whole numbers all the time. That's a teaching tool. Whole numbers are a teaching tool. Reality is we can have fractions and decimals and other ugly stuff, and you have to trust that you know what you're doing. Here's our final example. First, we need the rate of change. And then we're going to take the initial value. I'm just hammering you with that language. It is important right now. So, rate of change. Remember, as we move to the right, we can make a little triangle to show this. It's going up a lot, right? One, two, three, four, and over one, right? Up four, over one. We write that in simplified form next to the x, to the left of the x. And our initial value is way down here. What's the ordered pair? Zero, negative three. That negative 3 is what we call the initial value. That goes right there. This graph is y equals 4x minus 3. How'd you do? Pretty good, I bet. Thanks for watching, and there's more to come. But now you know how to write an equation when you're given a graph. See you later.